Welcome back to Absolute Comics. My name is Benny from Comic Story, and that is Sal from Comic Pop. And every week we get together to talk about the world of comics <laughs> and all the cool stuff we liked or complained about or whatever. Sal, did you read anything that came out today? Because I haven't, because DC didn't nope. that much. Yeah, it, it was, yeah, it was a World week. Number One. It's a fourth week, so there's not a lot that's uh, that's out there. Well, it was Beast World number one, which your brother said is good, but I did not read it. Oh, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm never going to read that. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, real quick, before we go into that, I forgot to, but uh, sponsorship, uh, this hot sauce is. Go check out the hot sauce created by me and my team. This is the This Hot Sauce Is brand. This is the Hatchin Jalapeno. Uh, if you want to support us, but you don't want to join up a Patreon, you don't want to join up a YouTube membership, you want to physically get something supporting us, then please consider going to thishotsauceis.com and get your hands on our hot sauce. A great way to support us, and you actually get something. So we're not an NFT situation. You get a physical hot sauce. And if you want, I will do a digital photo of it and send it as well so you can have that, that PNG, okay? <laughs> You can look at it. You can you can you can drink it all and then have a digital NFT for yeah, your of uh, my hot sauce. Yeah, yeah, of the hot sauce that you bought. Yeah, yeah. we we only made ten thousand bottles, so we have ten thousand NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> I will individually number them for you. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> so anyway, um, <laughs> yes. Where do we go from there? So yeah, right? Beast World came out this week. Apparently, it's really good. I've seen good reviews on it. My brother's yeah. been really good. I haven't read it yet. I am kind of interested, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I couldn't care less. No? <laughs> Why? No. Why does you want a Titans event? I, well, that. Uh, but also, I just don't care. Like, you know, we just did Night Terrors, and I'm like, we're good. You know, and then they're like, and Beast Wars or whatever. And I'm like, nah. I don't even know what it's supposed to be. And like, they didn't get creators in front of a mic and like, promote it. You know, like there's, I know nothing about it outside of like seeing it in solicitations. Yeah. Like, if DC doesn't care enough to sell it to me, then I'm not going to try and buy it. That's my only issue with this. And I think, I think that actually this is the first time I'm going to give their marketing department a little bit of credit. I think it's because they just promoted the hell out of Night Terrors and Gotham War. And then they're like, yeah, yeah. I, I know we got another event, but we, we should cool up. We should cool up bricks. We should cool up bricks. Well, yeah, we'll let Tom yeah. Taylor handle it on 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 Twitter because that's it. Right. <laughs> that, that that is that is like le legitimately the modus operandi for both Marvel and DC, and it is the laziest, cheapest, and most inappropriate way to market their books. It's just to go like, oh, by the way, like you who's writing the book or you who's drawing the book, you, you have an active social media profile. Could you just uh, do all the heavy lifting too? You know, like when is the comic book industry going to pick up the other end of the couch? Um, you know what? This actually segues into a great thing I want to rant about today in Please. the comic book industry. Did you know? Did you know that there is a comic book about Spider Man six one six traveling the multiverse to stop an evil spot from killing other spots, where he runs into Insomniac's Spider Man, and the two of them run into Tom Holland's Spider Man and fight. <laughs> No, I did not know that. I have not heard of that at all. Did you know it's on issue twelve? <laughs> I didn't even know it existed, much less that it uh, it was it was available. This book is called Spider Man Unlimited. It is a Marvel Infinity App situation where. Uh... But here's and here's a blows my mind that it, the book itself sounded incredible. So I downloaded the app. I spent 20 minutes trying to figure out how to use this app and read this book. And I read this book. It opens up with Doom sending a Doom bot to Spider-Man like a quest giver to tell him what's going on. And Spider-Man literally being like, I refuse to take a quest from a Doom bot. Go away. And the Doom bot being like, oh, from what Doom understands, you're all about responsibility. You wouldn't let us go away. And he's like, fine. Give me the quest. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. It's awesome. It's incredible. And you didn't know it existed. And it's on oh, issue 12. Who's working on it? Who, who's Chris, uh, what's the... guy, uh, Christopher. Uh, oh, what is it? He, it's the guy who wrote the Asomniac Spider-Man storylines. Oh, that's so cool. It's like a name too. It's not even like a nobody. Right. Exactly. That's cool. Okay. It's like Christopher Gage or something like that. Oh, Christos Gage. Yeah. Christos that Gage. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. The he's same great. guy who wrote the Asomniac Spider-Man stuff. Okay. Why does this exist? And I have heard about it nowhere. You know how I found out about it? Yeah. One of those competitive channels that does nothing but makes shorts on comic book things. Uh, get yes, a short on them. it. And I'm like, what the hell is this? I got to right. find this book to find out it's 12 issues in. <laughs> yeah. No, I've never, I'm looking at it right now on Infinity Comics. Uh, Simone Buona Fentino drawing it. I've never heard of it this. It looks good. It does the look good. The story's good. 
Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 our style is kind of a, it's more of a stylized Spider-Man. It's yeah, not, yeah. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. It's more youthful. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I got it. Still. What the hell? <laughs> Why is this not be like, this is like the equivalent of Marvel having an, an injustice comic. Right. Because what did DC do? Go read Injustice in Smallville every Tuesday and Wednesday. They promoted the hell out of that. This is yeah. like Marvel has a comic that you know, even if it's terrible, people would want to read. Yes. <laughs> and you don't know it exists. <laughs> and I've never heard of it before. Yeah. That's and it's only insane. Been the last month. It's been going on for quite a while now. You know, it'd be funny if they were like, oh, yeah. And also, it's a great way to promote the app. You know? Yes. <laughs> Especially now, like now is the best time to promote it with the fall of Comixology. Like, hey, I know the Comixology, blah, 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 blah. But listen, we got this app. You're going to love it. And there's an exclusive Spider-Man comic that you can't read anywhere else. <laughs> and you don't even know it exists. You don't yeah. even know. Oh, it's so it's so funny because I'm just like, why is it? Like when they announced Hickman doing some X-Men stuff, I think most yes. of us just went like, whatever. You know, well, like, I mean, like he was already working on other things as well. So it was like Hickman doing it was like a solo, like Infinity Scroll Wolverine book. It was like, oh, all right, no, like, maybe I'll check that out, but probably not. Right. And uh, and that was that. But Spider-Man meeting Insomniac Spider-Man and they end up fighting against Tom Holland Spider-Man. Yeah, that's insane. That's, <laughs> that, that's like a that's like a pitch. Like and, and it, it sounds like a pitch they would reject, honestly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it exists. It's a real book. I'm like, yeah, it's you... a real book you could literally read right now, and you can read twelve issues of it. <laughs> That's, uh... Now the issues are about half the size of a regular. So, but still, you right. got a, the equivalent of six issues of this storyline are yeah, good that's to go. Fair. Ugh, it's insane. <laughs> so we're doing that on Comic Story, and we're going to start covering that next week. <laughs> I mean, why? Why not? No one's ever heard of the damn thing, and they're like, it's canon. Also. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's Marvel. You know, of course it's going to be canon. Yeah. Uh, speaking of comicsology, uh, we'll jump to that topic right here. Why not? Uh, it was a little farther down. Where did was it on here? I thought Dan put it on here. I swear I read it as one of our topics, but oh well. <laughs> uh, comicsology is officially shutting down. My reaction to that was, didn't that already happen? Yeah, no. They, well, they they integrated it into Amazon proper, and uh, you know, but comicsology was still its own thing. It's just that when you went to comicsology dot com, it took you to Amazon and through the K the Kindle reader app. And I think everyone kind of saw that as like, Oh, you're going to inevitably like just completely shutter comiXology and just call it Kindle. Um, but at least they kept the guided view because if you do read your comiXology books through the Kindle e-reader, they did integrate the guided view, the newly improved yeah, guided view. I, I, I've been using that, but I didn't realize I had the comiXology app still on my piece on my tablet. Oh, of course. Yeah. And you could still use it for now. But uh, December 4th, I believe, is when uh, it's all over. It, it, it feels weird that Amazon yes. is just putting the nails in the coffin that is Comixology repeatedly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it, it'd be bad enough if they just did it the one time, but they keep killing Comixology. And it's like, man, you know, I, it's like they keep resurrecting it just to murder it all over again. I mean, that, that is, the, that, that's, that is the, 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 the marching orders of Amazon. Amazon's yeah. job is to find an industry undercut it to the point of its of its uh, desti decimation and then just drive prices back up i cite the entire book industry um now i understand that uh, amazon's partnering with like hyundai or something like that or they're gonna start selling cars and it's like yeah Are okay you to amazon.com to buy your car dude i mean honestly like here's the thing right like i got a lot of points and mm. no i'm kidding but uh i do have points, <laughs> but, like maybe not enough for a car but like, We're gonna test that theory. We're gonna make a video. This is this is gonna this is gonna be the new era of yeah. comic pop. Right, I'm gonna buy. I a got car enough Amazon, Amazon points to buy a car. Yeah, I guarantee that you. If and when it's implemented, you will like certain points will be ineligible. <laughs> it's gonna be a game of figuring right. out. How but they're doing groceries, car. like right? They're selling groceries. They're selling medication. Yeah, you know. But uh, that all is predicated on there being another industry for them to undercut in order for the prices to be in any way competitive. But yeah, no, the comics Which is so weird because they bought the premier and the only digital source for comics. Yeah, yeah. And that, they that bought was, it themselves. That was the most frustrating thing about like comicsology in general was like comicsology existed and it was the only digital source for comic books that managed to work directly with every single comic book publisher. There was another competitor or two 
that came out around like, I want to say 2006 and they couldn't secure the rights or the licenses with other premier groups. I remember they had like, one of them had like Valiant and that was kind of it, you know, and, and any, and any independent comic book publisher, you know, like it's, it's outrageous that the, there was never any business for competing directly with comiXology. Right. And yet, well, it's uh, funny because one of our viewers here says, this is why everyone switched to global comics. No, this is why this is the first time I'm hearing about global comics because time. there are dozens of competitors for comicsology and they all predicated on the idea of we don't have Marvel and DC. <laughs> like it did. Yeah. Nobody reads those. Nobody looks them up. Nobody yeah. goes to them. That's just the fact of the matter. No, it's true. Uh, like, you, you've got small niches, small pockets, yeah, but this is legitimately. I googled it. It's a real site, and it's, it says it has forty five thousand comics. So I'm looking at it right now. Oh, 45 whole thousand comic books. That's I own twenty thousand. So my exactly. collection's half the size of this app. Right but. now, they they do have like you know you think okay AWA Mad Cave yeah, but like they do have Image, they have Boom, and they have Top Cow, and they have TKO and Oni Press. But the weird Valley. part is they have all the independent stuff in the, in the thing, and the independent stuff doesn't sell comics apps in the mass market that they it, want. It barely sells comic books. You know, yeah. like we're talking drops in the bucket when it comes to the like open monthly market. And even that is in dispute, like just in the, in the brick and mortar monthly sales game, you know, people are debating whether or not the monthly game is still viable. And here we are with global comics being like, well, would you like to buy your monthly comics digitally and only the independent stuff? Yeah. And somehow I mean, will exist. Do well, if you really, really just want independent stuff, but I mean, that's cool. I just, but but what I'm saying here is I'm disputing what he said of everyone. No, no. no everyone, everyone is, is not. not swapping from Kindle to Global Comics. No. No. That's no, like no, you no. sitting here trying to convince me to do webtoons every other freaking day. And you ever, and then you link me videos on the webtoons channel that get like 500 views. Right. <laughs> now, that being said, like webtoons does have a like heavy audience of viewers. Oh, no, I'm, they but do. Like, but the transfer is, you know, it, it's just like anything, you know, no, if, if if there's like a huge crowd of people who are who are consuming one source of content, asking them to jump from one to another, not just one to another competitor, but from one place to another place directed directly from the source of content. For example, watching a YouTuber who's saying, hey, I need to eat. There's a link in the comments. Click that link and it will take you to a thing that you actually want to buy for an actual percentage off. The, the, the exchange oh. rate is like under a, is, is under a percent like this. Yeah. Just conversion getting... rates are terrible. Very rarely do those conversion rates. Exactly. Work. And YouTubers make just... the most of their money when they can get their product into a store. That's why Prime right. does well. Beast Snacks do well. Because they're not, not because they're promoting them. It's because they promote it. And then when you go to Walmart, you see it. You can actually buy the damn thing or tell your parents to yeah. get it. Have you actually had a Mr. Beast uh, chocolate bar? Actually, I have a whole box of them over there. Do you really? <laughs> I did. When it came out, I tried one. And I'm like, if you go to their website, they had like buy four different boxes and flavors. They're really good. <laughs> I have never had one and it's almost out of spite, but like. No, they're I, really good. If you like chocolate all... bars, I yeah. highly recommend a Mr. I Beast I think bar. it's over, isn't it? Oh, no, it was, it was Mr. Beast Burger. That's the thing. We're like, Mr. He... Beast Burger's what ended. He, he, he said he, he didn't have enough control over that. So he wanted to do snacks so he can have quality control per permanently. And every right. bar I've had is good. He is being sued out the ass for that Mr. Beast Burger fiasco, by the way. Like, yeah. that is... Because, like, how could you possibly have quality control over a, a, an independent pop-up burger shop on the <laughs> other side of the country? Like, yeah, no, man. Like, that was never going to happen. But you did enter into an agreement with these companies. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> The uh, one of our chats says Cruden says they're pretty bland. I will say if, if you're comparing them to like the bars that are loaded with tons of sugar, loaded with nuts, loaded with nougats, yeah, they're not they're bland because they're just a basic bar, right? It's just a basic chocolate bar. His big pitch is that there's five ingredients. That's so pretty cool. It's a basic chocolate bar. Well, and but not for only that, a basic chocolate bar, I find them better than Hershey's and stuff like that. So I, I don't really care for Hershey bars overall. The thing about that is if you can make it cost effective and just compete directly with like the bar that is on the shelf, like you can't be, you, you know, breaking into a niche industry like, uh, you know, like, like Nutrigain or, or Kind Bars, things like that, where it's like, it's got these ingredients and they're really special and they make you, you know, satiated without having any empty calories, like all that stuff. That's a completely different industry. But if you're like, I'm selling you chocolate, there's nothing special about it. Yeah. It's oh, and just, that's just it. That's literally the Mr. Beast part. There is nothing special about it. Like, that's brilliant. It's, it's a, just a great basic ass chocolate bar. 
Yeah. That's why, am I, why are we promoting this Beast Bar? You know what you should do? You should go to another influencer product and get yourself hot sauce so I can sell enough of these and get it into Walmart. See, that's the thing, <laughs> right? Right? Hey, listen, you buy that hot sauce and isn't and and that hot sauce is is a direct competitor with uh, you know, Frank's and uh, and all the yeah. other ones. Sriracha. I'd say we're closer to like a Sriracha than we are to like Frank's. Mm, I yeah. do love Frank's. No, I mean, yeah, but Frank's is like like a staple. Like you yeah. can't get away from Frank's at this point. No, but like, I other companies just use Franks in a recipe. <laughs> I know, I know. The thing that drives me nuts is when I'm someplace that has Franks like on the table, and I'm like, yes, and then I like try some, and I'm like, you put that other, you put like Cholula in there or something. Like this is not Franks, right? No, exactly. You just so anyway, back to, back to the discussion. Comic about books, consulting. yeah, comic books. The point we're making is, and look, I global comics. I want it to succeed. I want a, a comicsology competitor. I never heard Probably. of it before. I hope it works out. I've never heard of it before today. <laughs> and I'm, I'm that's fine. I mean, I made a whole video where I said I don't follow the trends because I try not to. So like it's, but the fact that you haven't heard about it is a little more shocking. I know I, they're I, gonna I, need Marvel and DC to get it to the comicsology level. You know, the, the rea- they're never gonna get it. I wonder why. I wonder why it's so hard to get Marvel. Is it just because they have their own apps now and they're like, leave us alone? Yeah, that's it. That's ex- that's exactly it. I, I I promise you, Marvel, mo- at least Marvel, DC, it's a different sell, especially back in like when they opened in like 2004 or six or whatever. But Marvel doesn't work with anyone overall. I, I can't imagine how they managed to convince Marvel to sign on to something that actually collaborated openly with the entire industry. Marvel doesn't play well with anybody. No, at, not at all. Ever. And they managed to, to partner up or get acquired by the only other company that notoriously also doesn't play well with others. I, the only reason I think they could have easily, easily gotten Marvel on board back in the day is because they did get everyone else. I feel like it was one of those deals where it's like, Marvel, we got everyone. If you could either literally everybody. Board, yeah. You're either on board or you're the only comic book, not in the only digital comic book app. And and it's the <laughs> only one. And, and yeah. you know, like app development, it's not like it's a pretty, it's not like it's, it, Marvel Limited was not a cheap service to create. You know, okay, they here's a spin. spent a ton of money on that. Global Comics is run by the original Comicsology team. I thought they went off to go make their own publishing company. Well, that sounds like a publishing company to me, but no, uh, but not digital. I thought they yeah. made a publishing. Remember, we were there and they were doing the worst marketing ever. I know the the new Chip Moser like publishing house. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I remember that. I thought that's what they were doing. So is this like the other half of the team went to go make this comicsology? That makes sense to me. Yeah, but the the thing that says that, that says uh, you know that this is foul to me is like, wouldn't you have your competitors under a non compete? What do you mean? Oh. Like when they sold Comicsology to Amazon, you have to imagine there was like a non compete clause in their contract for at least five to ten years. Right, but it would only apply to certain people. I mean, yeah, but I mean, I like they, if, if this is the team that made I mean, Comicsology, yeah, but Amazon went through and gutted the staff over there. I guarantee a lot of those were not let go with with non competes. Mm, that's that's fair. what I mean. Like they gutted the staff. It wasn't a like here's oh, no. your severance, your non compete, and well, you know what I mean, like it was, was like, only like ten of them anyway. Well, there was you like know, like 30, but it still. was a it was a small staff, as I recall. I've actually I I can say I was there. I was at the Comicsology offices. I was I got not, to meet everyone there. I didn't go to the offices. I went to their parties. There, there oh like, yeah, the, the like party. Yeah, that no, that's true. Well, that, the party that you and I went to in the city, that one was populated by not just Comicsology but Amazon people and also the industry. Oh, okay. That was that, that, was, that like I'm sure that the com- I, I'm sure that like employees of Comicsology were not invited to that party. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, instead of talking, well, you know what? I do want to state this, regardless of what I've said about the global comics. I do yes. want it to succeed. Absolutely. I, I love having. I loved reading my comics on my comic on my tablet. Without yeah. Comicsology, it's going to suck. I don't. It, like it already. Kindle sucks. Yeah, it Kindle sucks. sucks. I've never been on the, the but I still got to read things digitally because I travel too much. Mm-hmm. So I want global comics to get Marvel and DC. Just get DC. You know what? We can just stop reading Marvel. It's. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, Marvel's happy to let you do that. Uh, well, they've got their own app, which is six months late. I logged into that looking for that Spider-Man Unlimited book, uh-huh. and it's like, Fall of X is starting! And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Also, shouldn't that Spider-Man book be exclusive to the app? Isn't that, like, oh, the app's you, premiere book? You want you want you want Oh, yeah, it is. But, okay, so have you been on the on the website? Oh. Okay, look well, at not, this. Not well, not in a long time. So we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to go to... 
I'm making this so painful for Dan, who's got to edit it because we're missing an editor right now. <laughs> okay, so here it is, right? First okay. off, you go to it, it does this. You got logins in the corner, so you got to like, huh? Uh-huh, right? uh-huh. So, but I'm already logged in. So right. here is when you go, oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. I got to, hold on. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta log in. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> yeah. I love that it logged me in, and then it's like, wait a minute. Yeah, no. So here's how bad their app is. Okay. Right. Okay. I love. So this. Th- I was on stream trying to figure this out. This is the top page. This is not customized for me. Okay. This is a fresh account I made. Okay. okay? okay. I got points because we were doing some testing on their stupid things. Okay. Sweet. So, um, new releases. First off, new releases. Spider Man Thirty Two. Right. Alongside Facsimile Edition 300. Mm-hmm. And then you got, but, it, uh, oh, this one's not bad. Cause sometimes they filter it with like all re-releases of old comics. The one I looked at it last time, there was yeah. eight issues of Moon Knight from the 1980s. Oh, great. Un- under new releases. Yeah. Oh, Popular. Although those, yeah. Go ahead. Those books are relatively, you know, Thor, Jean Grey. I think they dropped. Yes. In, uh, in June. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, we did that because I mean that's the back when Spider Man was still Green Goblin, basically. Yeah, exactly. Or turning into Green Goblin. Mm-hmm. Um, and then popular this month is Loki stuff because they want to get you reading Loki. Okay. Yeah. So, where is any of the Infinity App stuff? Yeah, that's a great question. Where where, where is like a list of pop- popular superheroes? Well, and look at all of this wasted space on the left and right. It, I mean, I'm sure that if you're looking at this on your phone, I'm sure this whole website is optimized for your phone. But there is a desktop version, and I'm looking at it right here, and there's no good way for me to find the Infinity Books that are that are exclusive. I need to find the exclusive books, the, bo- the books that I am here to buy or to right. read because I was brought here by them. So if you go to latest comics, here's the newest issue of Spider-Man. That's, that's really new. Why is the, now? Okay. You can't read it. You can't read it. <laughs> Why is it here? <laughs> you can't read it though. You can't what read it here. Why, why did you put it there? <laughs> it's, it's all of these are this week. That's insane. But you can't read any of them. Yeah, because they won't be available on this app for six months. <laughs> that's nuts. Why would you do but that? They're at the top. They're at the top. Yeah. Okay. So Marvel Infinity stuff isn't up here either, right? What? So like, okay, let's go back to Marvel Unlimited. Oh, I clicked Marvel Unlimited. It brought me here again. Oh, good. The landing so I got, page. I got to re-log gotta, back gotta in. Log okay. back in. Yep. Yep. So let's click what Stormbreakers is. Oh, what is this? Oh, it's. it's I, I don't event. know. It, it's it, it, it's it, it's got its own tab, but you have Here's no idea some, what it is. It's a it's a high. They're highlighting different creators, but like, let's say I have okay. no idea what this is. And it's also one of those like super finicky. I, know, I, I hate that reading list. Let's go look at some reading lists. Okay? Sure, sure. So here's your reading list. You want to read about Aman Valani in her one book? I don't know if that's okay. a reading list. You could just say she wrote a book. Yeah, what? Echo, Before the Fall of X, Destiny of X, Marvel Vampires, Monica Rambo, Sins of Sinister. And Captain more Marvel. Captain Marvel. I mean, that I makes mean, sense. They, I mean, they, they're in the movies. They're on the, you know, they're talking about no, it. They're doing the movie characters. I got that. But totally what, makes women sense. of Marvel, Hawkeye. Sunspot? Sunspot's got a close-up? Good. <laughs> why? <laughs> That's what I mean. I mean, could be, you know why? Because it's arbitrary. Because after they've done all the movie characters, they're like, I mean, who, who else are we going to highlight? Right. Shuri, like, I have a feeling, has been there since the... the since uh, Black Panther 2. Black, Black, Black Panther 2. <laughs> no question. Um, and then it's basically just movie characters, and for the most part, oh, here's a Captain America event, okay. and then whatever their events are, which is just a lot of X Men because right, <laughs> sure. Um, again, we have yet to find Marvel Infinity. There's no reading list on here for Spider Man meets Insomniac Spider Man and they fight Tom Holland. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's, there's nothing in here for that. Um, so now we're left with that. So reading list, print subscriptions. Oh, oh, now we're leaving. Now we're leaving the website. Ah, oh, good. Let's leave the website again. <laughs> I mean, again, like, I'm sure that... And then uh, all comics. Okay. Ah, these look like they're exclusive to the to the app. Those top ones look like they are the Marvel uh, so, Infinity books. Okay, so we're going to read a Marvel Infinity book, right? Yeah, please. Doesn't okay. work on your computer. <laughs> I mean... And right. oh, oh, hey, let's read one X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, 142%. Oh, can't read it on the computer. It's not out yet. Why is it here? Like, why are you showing this <laughs> you, to me? Do you want to see Marvel Zombies 2? Oh, you better go to your local comic book shop. Or, ah! just, or go to Kindle. 
Okay, you know what? Let's say I did want to go to my local comic book store. Let's say that like after after paying for this app and then accessing its content, I clicked <laughs> on something that I had some interest in and then I wanted to read it. And then it took me to a landing page and said, you can't hear, you have to go out to your store and buy it. The least they could do is have like something integrated where I punch in my zip code and it shows me through Google I, Maps the they closest do. comic book store. They do. Okay. Well, it's not very obvious, but it's right here. Find a store. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I see it. Okay. All right. Now you, guys, now you guys know my zip code. <laughs> yes. But also like, what? A, that's like, that's like going to an ice cream store. Right. And then they're like, we're closed, but here's the directions to a grocery store. You can buy your own ice cream. Like what? Why so, were you here? But then we scroll down to all comics, right? We're in all. Yes. Best selling secret wars three Hulk four. What? Age of Ultron 1. But these books are 20 years old. <laughs> what are you talking about? Best selling. Ghost Rider 21. <laughs> awesome. Uh, new one, Marvel Unlimited. This is it took we had to go through three brackets to get to what's actually out this week in Marvel Unlimited. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is useful. And then yeah. read for free more stuff that you don't need to have your app for. You don't need to have a subscription for. Okay. You know what we have yet to come across? That, those exclusive books you were talking about. <laughs> exactly. Where is that Spider-Man book? So, in order to find the Spider-Man book, I had to find out its exact name, okay? Because <sighs> right. as with everything, looking up Spider-Man does not help. No. They're promoting the movies. It's like being on Amazon right now. Right, but I'm not on Amazon. Right. I should be getting comics. So, even if you group it up by comics, there's every... Comic book featuring Spider-Man. <laughs> that is unhelpful. Okay, and in the 2023 bracket, no Spider-Man Unlimited. In the 2022 bracket, no Spider-Man Unlimited. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, to find this, you need to know the exact name. Yes. That huh. brings you to it. Okay, but I have but, to type it in exactly. But remember... Doesn't work on your computer. <laughs> but I can't read it on my computer. Awesome. <laughs> That's how really Look what it came out to. This isn't old, Sal. November 7th, 2023 is when that issue right. came out. 11 okay, that, came was, out. that wasn't long ago. Yeah. November 14th. They're right there at the cover. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So in order to to get what you want in this app, it's got everything, but you need to know exactly what you're looking for. Great, which is exactly not how anyone shops. But to make this even better, they've got a, an insider program, Sal. Oh, what does that mean? So I can watch interviews over products. Why would I do that? So that you can then buy digital wallpaper. Oh, <laughs> no thanks <laughs> like no they thanks. gamified you, you know you know this was a focus of the app too yeah they were yeah. like oh we gotta have this like we gotta have this we yeah have this, this is this is a huge meeting this is like more important than digitizing comic books and making sure the lettering's correct is getting this these these exclusive wallpapers that i'm sure <laughs> are, are, a, are a pain in the ass to download onto your phone awesome so another another a, slam dunk from marvel <laughs> There's a few other things in here. You can get like puzzle quest stuff, but you need 150,000 points to get that. 300,000 points for this one. I have 8,000 from watching like four interviews. So. I was going to say, how do I earn points by watching like stuff they don't, that I have no interest in watching? Or You can also get bundles of comics. Okay. But if you have the app, you already have access to these comics. But, but can't so I, I just read them? Yeah. Uh, if you already have the app, you already have the access to these. So I don't know what the point of this is. Um, uh -huh. there's also merchandise, like you can get a mystery comic variant from New York Comic Con for a hundred thousand. <sighs> okay. Uh I don't know. Oh, I can be drawn into a Marvel comic book. Oh. Oh, I just got I just gotta watch seven hundred and fifty thousand points worth of interviews. <laughs> I promise you they don't have that much. It's also locked right now, so Yeah, so it's not even available. <laughs> mm. Okay. So this is the Marvel app, so right awesome now if i just wanted to 
mean, because I direct people to this to this app when they're talking about like either not having access to a comic book store or they want to read events. And they don't care about when these books come out at the at the end of the day. Can they simply go to the website and read comic books? According to our chat, I want to clarify because they're trying to help because obviously I'm reading it now. I guess during the holidays, they do holidays things that are pretty cool and easy to track. Mm -hmm. uh, they also want to let us know two months ago, there was a Doctor Strange Omnibus collection under merch. Right. So I guess they probably rotate the merch in and out. So All right, cool. It. Right yeah. now, I guess there's just nothing worth a damn on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm sorry. You said if you direct people there, what? Oh, can they just read comic books? Yeah, you got. You can click any of those books and it will load up a comic book. Except Good. anything that's come at that they're. It's. I just don't like the way they're organizing it. Like promote what's no. on this app. Yes, exactly. Like that's. Yeah. It took me way too long to find the the Marvel Infinity things too. You think that'd be like a huge promotional sale? Exclusive Absolutely. Comics over here. Yeah. So awesome. All right, let's move on to another topic because we might have to cut out that whole segment depending on how the editing goes for that. Mm -hmm. Dan, Dan's giving me the death stare from behind this in the green room right now. Yeah, well, we did face, shoot. His we face did is in this scrunch of like, you can't see my face at this size. You right. can't see me like this. And I'm like, yes, I can, Dan. I know exactly what you're thinking to yourself. You're thinking to yourself right now, I didn't make a face and Benny's making up shit. That's what you're thinking. Anyway, <laughs> he's literally doing this now. He's like, oh, what? What? No way. <laughs> All right. So anyway, he that first topic on here, Loki creator Michael Waldron is set to write the Marvel Avengers King Dynasty movie as well as the Secret Wars He's uh, that he was already set to work. Yeah, I heard that too. That's cool. I'm excited for that. He did a really good job doing the multiverse, doing the Loki show. Uh, if we're going to do a thing involving that whole thing, let's just take the guy that did the best job with it. Yeah, he also wrote Doctor Strange too. Like so, I, which I thought was was the plan already, but I guess no. He was gonna write. I don't remember what the who who got mixed up for what, and I know also that like it doesn't matter who writes these movies because they're just gonna make it up on the day anyway. But uh, yeah, you know, at this point, at least affiliation with Loki means you have some like good graces <laughs> with your audience, <laughs> you know, because like he also worked on Thor four, which is like the worst thing ever. So I can understand like some trepidation. I, I don't, I don't get it, I, you know, it's, but, uh, but at least like where, where Loki ended up makes a lot of sense for me for Kang dynasty. I can't believe they're still even talking about Kang dynasty. Like I, I'm surprised they don't just go quiet on it until they figure out what they're doing. Yeah. Just, just, just shut <laughs> up. I'm not saying get rid of it. No. Shut up until you know what you want to do. Just, I don't want to hear about Kang Dynasty again until yeah. there's a poster. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm excited. I like Loki. So I want to see yeah, what he can I do. Liked, I like Loki too. I'd be fine with, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want like a longer Loki because I was very happy with the Lo what Loki was. I'm, I'm happy with how Loki ended up. I don't need Loki again. Yeah. I take Loki again, like as a character, but I, I don't need to have like, Loki the movie, but it's called Loki Kang. That'd be fine with me. Yeah. Uh, next up, we got Chip Zdarsky teases the return of sex criminals as it approaches its 10-year anniversary. I never got around to reading that. Isn't that the one where the two people have sex and time stops? Yes, that's right. That's exactly. Okay. You nailed the premise 100%. That is exactly what happens. Yeah, whenever they have okay. sex, they stop time and they rob banks, basically. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. They are literal sex criminals. But uh, they, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited for that only because like it was a great series and uh, he and uh, Matt Fraction and uh, and Kelly Sudeikonik are, are awesome. And uh, I hope we see more of it. Um, I don't know what that means as far as like getting more of this uh, of that book, but like, cool. Right. I yeah. I since I didn't read it, I can't be like, oh, I will we'll do this and this loose plot thread. I didn't read the book. I always meant to. Yeah. It's it's. it's Sal, this tells you how long I've been doing this shit because I remember when this came out and how big of a deal it was. Yeah, and now now it's a ten year anniversary and we're still here talking about comics. And we we had a video ourselves like on it when it like first debuted, and now it's the ten year anniversary of its. You know. <laughs> oh man, should we, did we do, we didn't do a ten year anniversary of you and me doing podcasts? We should do that. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I, what? I, hey, somebody in the chat, what was the first weekly poll Sal was on? How many years ago mm. was that? How many years? Cause that I would consider weekly pull to absolute. That's one, tr that's one tenure for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think absolute's coming up to five years. I think so. Which is We've, insane. Okay. Someone in chat. I look, look up what Sal first arrived on the weekly poll. Cause I don't even know where to find that. You all seem to, 
Yeah. Uh, and then, t- and then tell me the first episode of absolute. Let me know. Right? These things. Exactly. And I'm asking chat before Dan does it. Cause Dan's going to be like, I hate you for making me look this stuff up. He's <laughs> in the back going, not me, not me, man. No, bro. No, Mm-mm. no slow, bro. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Spider-Man two venom voice actor, Tony Todd reported that Spider-Man two game only used 10% of the recorded lines for venom. People are wondering if this means the larger portions are cut in the game, or does it mean that we will have more venom coming in future DLCs and such? You, I think uh... it was cut. You think it's cut because like you're a video game person, like you know about this stuff. I assume that just means like, you know, we record a lot of stuff for every character, you know, like I'm sure that, you know, Mark Hamill could say the same thing about his lines in any of the Batman games. It's like they only use like 2% of what I said. Um, And I, I, and I think most of it was cut just because of how rushed act three felt to me. Yeah. Big time. When he was actually right. Yeah. Like he doesn't say a lot. And when he does, he's like, remember our sleepovers. And I'm like, (laughs) No, Venom. I don't. Go away. <laughs> yeah. I don't want Venom talking about that. But uh, yeah. Okay. I hated a lot of the side missions. I'm sorry, Sal. <laughs> uh, yeah. the, the, the game The game is uh, a technical marvel. It is. But... It is padded in the weirdest spots. Yes. Like. <laughs> yeah there's like there's like weird priorities that the game developers had like some yeah. of it is like we have to make sure this game is like immersive and it, it, it just it feels incredible and that like any of the if we make any changes about spider-man's mechanics it only can be an improvement and that is 100 percent accurate and also i really really need to get like miles's social life working like i need to <laughs> I need you to meet his teacher and she gets, you know, what makes me so mad about that though. Yeah. If you wanted me to do a miles social life mission, why wasn't it a miles? It was Spider-Man. Yeah. Spider-Man showing up and doing it all. Right. I I get you want the community. I get all of that. That mm -hmm. wouldn't be Spider-Man. That would be miles. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I I wonder. I know that uh, and almost immediately there were rumblings about like them making a Venom game, like a solo Venom game. Is that something that you think is probably going to happen? And do you want it? Uh, I would be down for it. The question is, what kind of Venom are we getting? I mean, I'm. Are hoping we getting it's... like you know the the Incredible Hulk Rampage game with the current big Venom, or are we get like an Agent Venom kind of? I take both. I take either. I mean, like yeah. it's easy enough to just go. Oh yeah. Um. So the symbiote moved on, and uh, it survived, and it found Eddie Brock, and <laughs> and now we're gonna do this. Also, Flash Thompson, and now you can just be either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That'd be that'd be kind of cool. I'd be very okay yeah. with that. So. Um. Next up, we got this one. I found interesting. Um, good job on Dan for finding this one. DC announces a new Red Hood miniseries called Red Hood: The Hill. With issue zero coming out in February 2024, issue one will be a week after. Issue zero, issue zero is a collection of Red Hood Outlaw issues 51 and 52. So, are we skipping all stuff that happened to Red Hood after the end of his series? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> like, I'm really curious, and I, I I meant to pull this up. I don't Red Hood Outlaw 51 and 52. What happened in that? I don't know. Did you I even was, read it? No. I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up right now. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Try looking for anything on here. You know what I mean? Like I know. No, I know. There's outlaws, outlaw, outlaw 47. Yeah, outlaw, outlaw 51 and 52 is when he goes back to Gotham and admits that everything's good and he's good to go and he's going to come back to Gotham City. So literally, if you if you just read these, they're skipping everything in the middle. Hmm. <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, is it Scott Liddell writing it again? That might be sense. why. Because he yeah. wrote up to the ending of the original Red Hood run that everyone loves. So could be just him going like, and we're going to ignore what Chip Zdarsky did. And we're going to ignore whatever the hell happened in Gotham war. And we're going to ignore uh, that whole zombie phase. And mm-hmm. we're just going to go back to what I did. Oh yeah. No, we are definitely going to ignore that. Uh, you know, zombie movie. phase. You have task force Z. Is that the book? It wasn't bad. I stand by that statement. It's all over the place, but it comes together so well at the ending. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why do you not like Red Hood leading zombie Arkham inmates? Like, <laughs> no, that that pitch is great, and the execution is uh, not so great. 
<laughs> but like I found that that might be there. There might be a consistency there where I'm like, mm -mm, I just don't. I just don't care for that. But we'll see. You know, I, I, Legends I, appearance was the original Chip Zdarsky run where he basically retired Red Hood. Yeah. Only to bring Red Hood back in Gotham War and do weird stuff. And then <laughs> re-retire him. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Like that Chip Zdarsky finale is perfect. The way like Blue Hood and he gives up the guns and yeah. then the very next appearance, blah, 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 blah. I started blasting. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So I started blasting. Exactly. That's that's Red Hood to a T. Yep. Um, all right. Next up, we've got James Gunn mentioned in a tweet that he's currently in the process of writing Peacemaker season two. Superman okay. Legacy is the current main focus, but it seems he's prepping for the next big thing. Uh, I mean, I think James Gunn is just prepping everything at this yeah. point. What do you think? I mean, that makes sense to me. Uh, the, 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 the Peacemaker thing is just like, all right, well, what does that mean? Like, what universe yeah. is it in? Who's rebooted? Like, what are you, are you setting in that universe? Because, like, I, and I, I think that there will be a clear delineation between universes. I think that it's going to be genuinely, like, you're going to see a thing. Not unlike when, uh, in, in, in the Loki show, someone where they, they show, like, where people dropped off, and they said, like, branch timeline versus, like, you know, yeah. sacred timeline. I think that, like, Peacemaker will be, like, you know, th there'll be either, like, a, like, a, like, a different DC intro or something else that like indicates like this is the universe you're in for this project like superman legacy is the new dc universe that's interconnected and is going to start with this this isn't this the batman is going to be this universe and it's going to have its own intro and like the peacemaker is going to be set in that universe that has aquaman played by jason momoa in it like that's that universe like i i my thing is just like but but you just got through throwing it all away so you, I I think they're gonna I think they're gonna continue with the throw it all away thing. I think they are. But then, well, then what is Peacemaker season two? I mean, you just do like an infinite crisis and infinite earth thing. I mean, yeah, I guess that's true. You and that way you can just keep what you want to keep. You know? I, yeah. Like what? What if? What if? I got a pitch. I got yeah. a pitch. Yeah, yeah. He pulls what DC pulled with the new Fifty Two. Hmm. He just doesn't tell you what universe things are in, and you could start piecing it together. And we come to find out there's something like Doctor Manhattan pulling the strings, and that's why things got weird. Okay, all right. If there was a, um... but that that's like his first big, like I guess my it wouldn't be the big plot because he's gonna have yeah. like a dark side or something going on, dude. Um, they could zero hour it and be like, oh no, it's hyper time. Like things changed and, you know, extant shows up and mucks with time. Just something fun where it's like, it's not, it's not definitively dark side. You know, it's like something, something else. So that, that way you don't go like, okay, so we started with our huge bad, it's Thanos. And then uh, the next one's Kang. So you don't care at all. Like, <laughs> instead of saying, oh, our big bad is like, you know, something like parallax. And then you can build to something else. If Dude. You want to. He right? does seem like the Green Lanterns. Go in the parallel. Give us John Stewart and Hal Jordan, and Hal Jordan is everywhere and becomes the villain of our story, right? Or he was he was the Green Lantern in the like you know what I mean? Like he he was the main Green Lantern. That's why like uh, Nathan Fillion is Guy Gardner in this world because it's like I had to I had to step up because the the best of us fell. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm just saying I I get a weird feeling he's just not going to acknowledge it. There will be no clear indicators and it'll slowly let us figure it out as we're going. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Cause then he could easily do things like Jason Momoa Lobo meets Jason Momoa Aquaman and all, and the internet itself will be like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, we don't need that. We don't need, no, but you need, you need the social media flip outs to get back to where we were. That's Remember true. the buildup does no way home. Yeah. Yeah. That's Every Spider-Man in existence is going to be in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And Wolverine, <laughs> but they worked their 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 asses off to say like the internet said all that stuff, but they never did. They right. were just like, yeah, but he no. just he just needs to drop enough for the internet to do that. Right, right. That's, that's what true. I'm saying. Like he doesn't need to actually have the scene of Jason Momoa. No, Jason Momoa. Yeah, yeah. But if he just doesn't clarify, right, and lets things stay muddied. <laughs> yeah that's true that's true I, I i like the cleanliness of like establishing or declaring like what universe it's in but i also understand like the motivation behind nebulously being like here's your new universe and they're gonna meet peacemaker and where he's just not gonna acknowledge the fact that everybody looks different i was like also for the record think about peacemaker's things he's been in 
other than that one scene where he that met one Matt, scene one scene that has henry cavill Which, superman gal gadot wonder woman but you could digitally remove it yeah yeah I'm just saying he has met no main cast members of the of the uh, the uh, the universe. No, he literally met Flash. He met Ezra Miller. Other, other than that scene, Jason other than that Walker scene, uh, other than that scene, I got to give you that scene. Yeah, but I'm saying is like he didn't have a movie crossover or anything like that. No, the closest we got was he met up with Harley Quinn. Right, right. Which we just recast and call it a day. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> if they if if that. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I was going to say, Peacemaker is the only one that literally hasn't crossed over with anything for the most part. Yeah. You had one gimme scene that he got filmed because he had people in the right spot at the right time. You know, yeah. like. Yeah. I heard they, didn't they shoot that on the Disney lot? I yeah, heard they shot that at, like, was, at Marvel. Yeah, it was like a weird situation to make it happen or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that. But yeah, I, uh, I, I don't want, I didn't want to think about it. Like, I liked Peacemaker a lot. I was very happy with the first season. I don't need more Peacemaker. Um. So I'm not clamoring for it because I'd rather move on. Like I'd rather just I be feel like, like Peacemaker ended in a good spot. Me too. I, I was like, I was very happy with how Peacemaker turned out. I'd much rather just be like, all right, I just want to focus on Superman legacy. I want to focus on yeah. that. Well, I think that's what James Gunn is doing as well. Cause even with that, he's like, yeah, I'm working on it, but Superman legacy, Superman. Le that is where we're starting. Yeah. Let's look to that. <laughs> the question is where is Peacemaker going to come out? Like, are they gonna are they gonna push Max? Is it gonna be on TV? I don't know. I don't know. He hasn't announced any other shows, has he? Well, besides Creature Commandos, the animated show, because the Green Lantern got bumped up to a movie, right? I think so. Yeah, which is okay. a, a good idea. As oh, much yeah. as I would want to watch like a six hour Green Lantern movie, I, I'd rather get just like a straight up. Well, no, Green, Green Lanterns movie. is the perfect property for that because you get to do the movie with Hal Jordan and John Stewart, and then you do yeah. the show with Guy Gardner and Kyle Rayner, and then yeah. you can even do if that does well, you do a spinoff show with Chip, right? <laughs> yes, and Nort. Although yeah. I think no, I think Guy is the movie Lantern because Guy's going to show up in Superman Legacy. Okay, so you're right. Maybe they're going the parallax route. That would be an interesting first villain. Like, yeah, hey guys, I'm the Green Lantern. We had a better one, but you know he fell. <laughs> and then we just, they just leave it like that for a while and then yeah. you just start seeing them pop up right that'd be kind of neat you could even have a scene where it's like superman's beat down and like uh, like a superman two or three yeah. and he sees the green and he's like oh thank you guy you're here to save me and it's like i'm parallax you yeah. know what i mean like what oh no we got a panic sal <laughs> yeah. oh no oh my god yeah that'd be kind of fun yeah oh especially if they were like yeah because i think um the Superman is not like an old Superman, but he is like he's been there, like he's existed. So it could be. I think they said like mid twenties is like the the general consensus right now. Right, his he, origin's over. He's in Metropolis. Exactly, but he he's already been, been there. Yeah. So maybe he's met Hal Jordan already. You know. So it'll be interesting, but I have faith. James Gunn has not has not steered me wrong in any of his not stuff yet. recently. Once he kind of got into his like graces with Gr Guardians, yeah, he's been solid. So yep. Oh man, yeah, Guardians three was so good. Yep. So, all right. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? Oh, man. I, I want to say there was other things going on in the industry, but not really. It's been very quiet. Um, but a lot of, like, confirmed, not confirmed bullshit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. You know, when, when it comes to Spider movies and Madam Web, we've done plenty of videos on this channel about that. Oh, yeah. I don't, yeah. don't want to even focus on that. But, uh, yeah, I, I guess, um, you know, I, I hope that with Superman Legacy, when that movie comes out, maybe it'll if it does well, it might stoke a fire to finally get one of those Superman video games that everybody's been asking for forever. I mean, I don't, people are asking me how you would do Superman. The only, I, I would do it like Spider-Man yeah. and I would make him early. I would make him like the anime one that you hated, uh -huh. but, but, but in terms of his powers, where he's right. still getting them. So right. you can, so he can get his butt kicked. Mm. If, if you just depower him a little, right. You can make a, a Spider-Man level game with him. Yeah. 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 The yeah. only thing is like, you know, you, you people, I think, I think people who are clamoring for a Superman game want it to be like GTA where it's like, or, or invincible where it's like, watch him smash through every building. Like <laughs> well, what if that's the end of the game? You build up the power to the end of the game and then you can just go right through. Buildings. And then you could just go nuts. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of fun. Yeah. I take that. Or you can put him in space, you know, and he's, so he's either depowered, lower powered, or he's destroying cities. You don't really care about. I don't know. Yeah. 
I don't know how to square that circle because I so want to see. Do you want that. Zack Snyder's Superman? <laughs> no, just, well, I, I know that's going to happen. Like, I know that like there is a fun impulse to be like, watch me smash through this building. Like, as a vi- in a video game, is it escapist form what if it's of the like injustice? Superman just killing everyone. <laughs> right. I mean, that is probably what they would want to do first, given their predilection for that. I mean, Superman. Uh, you know, he's a murdering psychopath in the in the Suicide Squad game you're going to play. He's a murdering psychopath in all the Injustice games. Like, there, there's never been a, a pure Superman, except for, of course, everyone's favorite video game, uh, Superman 64. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Oh, all right, guys. Well, that is Absolute Comics for today. My name is Benny. I'm from Comic Story, and that is Sal from Comic Pop. And together, we get together weekly to stream here live every Tuesday at about 5 p.m. Eastern, promoting Absolute Comics, talking about comic books and stuff like that. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, check out the hot sauce, influencer products. Would love you to guys check out this hot sauce is. And we'll see you next time right here. <laughs> <laughs>